Hi all, my name is Iris Garcia Zambrana. Uh, I am an assistant professor in City and Metropolitan Planning at the University of Utah. Today we'll be talking about the Home Repair, Reconstruction and Relocation Program or RG program for short in Puerto Rico, which provides relief for homeowners who were impacted by Hurricanes Maria and Ima um, on September 17 of 2017. There's about uh, 50 years of scholarship on the topic. Researchers have found that uh, these programs require a lot of planning, they're costly, involve legal matters related to property rights, they're politically contentious, and it's difficult to satisfy the concerns of our parties. Public participation is key and works best uh, when local nonprofits are involved in assisting residents to understand risk and to make relocation decisions in a voluntary manner. Relocation is best as a last resort as um, there are issues related to place attachment and livelihood. This is why many residents tend to come back to their original neighborhoods. Closer participation is preferred compared to individual relocation. And finally, vulnerable communities are the most affected. So planners have emphasized the importance of planning equitably and empower communities. My research question is, what are the concerns and recommendations raised by advocates about the R3 program? I have been engaging with local nonprofits such as, such as Ayuda Legal, Hispanic Federation, National Income Housing Coalition, OSFAN, Fondo Asesora Justicia, Ponte CNHS, among others, attending meetings, forums online in person, engaging in letter writing, and having one on one conversations. So the findings um, that will be presented come from that engagement. I also read documents such as the allocation notice, action plan, guidelines for R3. Office of Invest Inspector General HUD report, among other plans and proposals. I incorporated all the com documentation such as newspapers, blogs, email correspondence, YouTube videos, Facebook live pages, and among other social media. In the end, 12 concerns and recommendations will be presented. First, some background. The U.S. Congress allocated $20 billion, Community Development Broad Grants Disaster Recovery Funds, or CDBGDR, to the Department of Local Housing or Vivienda, who created a national plan. Uh, right now we are in Amendment 7, which outlines 19 programs in housing, economy, planning, multi-sector, and infrastructure. The RT program is one of the nine programs uh, with an allocation of two billion. The primary objective of this program is to resolve of met housing needs. A second objective is assisting low to moderate income homeowners, and a third objective is to achieve complementary benefits of neighborhood revitalization to promote a uh, future resiliency. Applications open July 31st, 2019. The first 90 days, uh, the program emphasized priority groups, which were applicants with significant property damage, including homes with um, blue tarps, older adults, and those um, with disabilities. Here's a diagram of the process after eligibility, Inspections are scheduled uh, for damage assessment. There is an environmental review for contaminants, soil, flooding, landslides, as well as an evaluation of duplication of benefits, including FEMA assistance. If damages are less than 60,000, then the house could be repaired in the existing site. If losses exceed the 60,000, then the home will be demolished and the constructed in place for a cost of no more than 185K. However, if in the initial plan for vivienda, a home with um, severe um, damages could not be reconstructed in place if it was located in a floodway, in this scenario, the household will uh, be given a voluntary location award, which is a voucher that they could take to the market using a primary pre-approved list from vivienda to buy a safe dwelling elsewhere. This list doesn't include the vacant properties, which are a big problem in the island, according to planners and activists. The home will be then acquired by vivienda, demolished, and zoned for open space, not allowing for reconstruction in place if living in a floodplain is an issue that advocates really took on, as um, it was a regulation not dictated by the federal government, but um, a decision by vivienda. This is what advocates had to say publicly. Denying people to repair, rebuild the homes are in risk areas exposes them to continue living in vulnerable conditions um, and a greater insecurity in the face of future disasters, forcing them to decide between putting themselves at risk or abandoning their homes should not be an option to promote resilient um, communities. 
Upgrades of the steady that 250 households, living areas, a risk of FEMA, 100 floodplain map, which is about 20% of um, all households in Puerto Rico. Most of them are uh, low-income families that build informally, do not have land titles, and thus do not uh, receive FEMA assistance. Meanwhile, Vivienda said that um, they did not want to rebuild in an area that was insecure so that they uh, that we could be more resilient in the future as a nation. Another goal was for uh, the property to be up to code and be safe. Um, the initial R3 guidelines have a few exceptions like elevation of historic structures or repair of homes that were not substantially damaged. But after much insistence from advocates, they added one more exception that it could be done when reasonable. Often, a two feet elevation standard and when cost did not exist uh, 185k for a family um, elevation alone is estimated to be $75,000 um, besides uh, being able to rebuild in flood zones advocates raise other um, issues such as the first R3 guidelines uh, were only available in um, English, uh, which violated Title IV of the Civil Rights Act of 1994. In addition, there was no process of poly participation. This um, has now been improved. They advocated for various modes of um, reaching populations, such as online, in person, TV, radio, newspaper, um, which is much better now. And taking into consideration social networks and livelihoods, nonprofit organizations argue that participation um, should happen at the community level so that people could discuss the relocation of complete communities, something that has not changed to date. In addition, they argued that the allocation notice, program guidelines, and action plan um, were inconsistent and had um, contradictory um, information. An advocate stated the process after confu uh, uh, the process are confusing, they are not well organized and they are not um, well structured. The guides do not agree with each other. For example, one of the differences between the allocation notice and the allocation plus plan as discussed was the issue of flooding and substantial improvements. Another example is that the action plan talked about how those with no title have the possibility of demonstrating ownership through alternative documentation. Meanwhile, the program guidelines applicants were referred to the title clearance program. However, at the time, the guidelines for that program have not been um, published yet. Eventually, the R3 application did not include alternative proof of ownership. However, advocates have been vocal about the query mechanisms leading to arbitrary judgments um, that the application is incomplete because it doesn't provide a uniform document and applicants can fill out. The program states that you can apply uh, even if you were denied of FEMA assistance because of um, title issues. However, some of the same issues persist. Um, as, again, there's kind of like a preference for um, titles. Having a title is not necessary um, for federal assistance, but we can clearly see how the federal recommendations that Vivienda adopted from the OIG report, um, which you know suggested that Puerto Rico should establish systems for effective property management, including the title clearance. In addition, it suggested to improve systems of property tax collection for functional permitting, code enforcement, inspection systems, and funding um, accountability. Community-based organizations argue that many of these policies tend to hurt some of the most vulnerable um, when securing assistance. Another issue brought up by activists was the lack of program transparency and sharing data, which resulted in a Vivienda data portal that tracks number of applicants, awards, projects um, completed, and so on. Uh, still, the data is limited, for example, about 4,000 awards. Of about 4,000 awards, about half have been completed. We assume that these are repairs because no single home has been reconstructed yet, according to advocates. But it's curious that Vivienda doesn't uh, break down the data of completed projects by repair, reconstruction, and um, relocation. Uh, Vivienda is a slow spender. A little over 37 billion million have been disbursed through the R3 program, which 
has a biggest budget representing 43 percent of the 835 million allocated in the first um, grants of cdbgdr um, corruption and poor management of funds are concerns from the federal government and also ngos another issue is that um, there is no temporary or transitory housing plan for those who wait. People have moved into the homes of relatives, friends, or had to juggle to rent um, other spaces. An advocate stated instead of seeing transitional housing assistance as exceptional, Vivienda should offer assistance within the R3 program that allows these families to relocate um, temporarily. A final issue is that families who, in the face of four years of waiting, chose to repair their housings according to their best capability, are actually punished. An advocate further explained, Vivienda established that it will not complete repairs initiated by the homeowners in an informal manner, that is, without government permits and other related documents. In these cases, if the person is eligible, they can receive reconstruction assistance, which involves demolishing the home, including the repairs made by the owner, and building a model home um, in its place. To summarize the recommendations, so um, some that have been changed by Vivienda, most have uh, been partially adopted and some have been ignored. Language access is um, good now. Some things that have improved, but still need improvement, are body participation, various modes of um, reaching people, consistency in the guidelines, alternative documentation for providing ownership, the right to stay in flood zones, um, data transparency, and funding accountability, along with um, location assistance benefits. And finally, some of the things that have been ignored are the complete reconstruction of housing, rebuild informally their relocation of complete communities and the inclusion of vacant property on the Vivienda um, relocation um, list. Well, thank you so much.